Hello. Hello, 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 hello. March 12th, 2014. If I sound hesitant, I'm watching the control panel. You wouldn't want me in the cockpit of an airplane, that's for sure. Cool, cold day again. We had our spring yesterday. Spring's over, winter's back. How are you today? This is the Dinosaur News. Coming at you from central Ontario, loyal Ontario, cottage country, loyal to our British history, our British roots, our ancient British way of life, individualism, free will. And we speak to those spread around the globe. The British diaspora, those of British stock who are proud of their roots. <laughs> so I closed off yesterday saying I needed a spark. I've got quite the spark for today's show. Now, this is not an alarm, okay? I almost laugh at what I'm about to read to you. The purpose of what I'm about to read to you listeners, viewers, is to show you that the dinosaur news is having an effect. It's upsetting multiculturalists or someone. Now, a preface before I let you in on what I'm getting at, the Beatty style. John Beatty here, International Director of the British People's League. As you know, I click in every morning to see what countries had clicked in and viewed overnight. The uh, Google Analytics shows one these statistics. And not only can you get the country, you can get the city and the region. You can't identify the individual viewer. But uh, uh, it gives a broad view of, of how things are growing, how things are going. And yes, we have the steady in the same areas. There's nothing new. Some from the homeland, the odd one from the states. A steady in uh, central eastern Ontario, Peterborough, Oshawa, etc. Once in a blue moon, we'll get a fluke. Now... <laughs> British People's League, of course, short is BPL. Now, when the YouTube is completed, before it's distributed, the author or publisher gets the opportunity to click in keywords to increase your viewership. So I found out months ago when I clicked in BPL as a, a way of spreading the word, suddenly a uh, front page in a, in a Hindu India newspaper. BPL is also initials used by the Bangladesh Premier League in football. Isn't that marvelous? So in that regard, sometimes when we put in BPL, the odd fluke viewer uh, thinking it's the football league clicks in from various areas in Africa or, or, or uh, East Asia, whatever. Just once in a while, a fluke. This morning, I noticed in the analytics, a hit from Nigeria was overnight. Okay, so a hit, fluke, fluke hit from Nigeria. About 11.45 a.m. this morning, March the 12th, on my personal email, not my political email, but my personal email, came this ridiculous statement and believe me I consider it ridiculous so I I don't want you viewers to take any do anything or take any moves to uh, because you're concerned I doubt that you could see uh, it's just well you probably maybe you can see a fair bit something to the effect of someone very close to you Beatty wants you dead by all something or other. I'll read it all to you in a minute. By all means, I have been hired to kill you. 
the person also also came to us with information that he wanted you dead and he gave us the he has provided us with your details on how to kill you. Now, do you want to live or die? Signed, Mohammed. Now, notice it's to undisclosed recipients at the top, although to John Beatty at my personal email address. Now, they have an, e an address, the sender of this death threat, but I suggest to anyone seeing it, do not fall for the trap. Don't even bother clicking into that email because it could be a virus. Who knows what it is? Okay, so how is that for a spark? <laughs> I asked for a spark and I got one. What I ascertain is the opposition multi-cults realize fully the potential of the Dinosaur News videos brought to you five days a week. The multi-cult realizes, whoever they are, the mixed bag, whatever, or maybe someone directing them, that everything John Beatty has said optimistically about eventually getting funds for the British People's League that we can carry out our van plans, that we will grow quickly, astronomically, just as a rocket ready to take off. The opposition knows this, and therefore this childish threat. No, I have no intentions of going to the police with the matter. Uh, some police are friendly, some aren't, who cares? But once uh, you, as terrible Tommy says, when you let them into your house, you know, they're friendly, but they got a job to do. So they look at every picture of my walls and find out. They, they want to know more about you or your operation when you stand up for white people than anything else. So please don't take it any further. But I just want to show you that we're getting somewhere. You don't get this kind of crap unless you're moving forward, moving ahead. And I repeat... The multi-cults know, the invaders know, absolutely for sure, that if Beatty had the funds, the British People's League will skyrocket. And it will happen. It will come. And we're ready. We have our house of brick ready. And our chimney is fully aflame. When the big bad wolf continues to stick his head down our chimney, he's going to be in for an awful big shock. Also, in this regard, I truly believe that the multi-cult are very worried about the genius plan of this American fellow, Kyle Hunt. Not so much maybe about Mr. Hunt, but about his idea that is now going to see reality in a few days. The white man's march, the white man's protest, the white man's pride day, the white, the white day. Coming up March 15th, this very Saturday. And in a moment, I'm going to refer you to the New York Village Voice, uh, March 12th. So click in, Just you just have to Google the White Man March and you'll see the Village Voice. An incredible article, a fair article, about the planning across the globe for the sparks of white awakening, of white pride, White man taking a stand. I am somewhat disappointed that some blogs for the white cause out there in the ether are not pronouncing this white day, this white day coming up enough. Not enough. The idea behind this is fantastic. And I'm talking with gray hair here. 
tried every approach under the sun to get our people to take pride and to get organized and whatever. And to me, this is the greatest idea that's come along in my entire political life, which runs over decades. So timing, some days I have a hard time filling time, and today I, I won't have enough time. But uh, let's see if we can get that up today, up to the screen, the Village Voice, the White Man's March, which is almost exactly what it sounds like, is coming to New York. And this is the Village New York Voice a white man's march. So again, just Google it, white man's march. So some of the highlights. This coming Saturday, March 15th, in a bunch of cities worldwide, disgruntled white supremacists will take to the streets. And I am proud to call myself a white supremacist. I don't <laughs> budge from that word. We're, we're supreme. You're damn right we are. We fell asleep, but now we're awake. So watch out will take to the streets bearing banners that read diversity equal white genocide in very big red letters. The White Man March aims to be a large display of coordinated pro-white activity. Time to coordinate to co coincide with St. Patrick's Day and meant to express these white folks displeasure with how white countries are being overrun with you know multi cults and such. There's only one hitch. The organizer of the White Man March is Kyle Hunt, a 30 year old guy who hails from a very small town in Massachusetts near Cape Cod. Hunt understands that in the United States, white nationalists don't really have the numbers to pull off an impressive march. Past white supremacist protests have ended up, in his words, looking like a circus. John here speaking, how true, how true. He's also fearful that the police or anti-fascist protesters might show up to disrupt the WMM festivities. And I'll just interject here. I have been very successful over the years at flash situations, flash demonstrations. Back in the early 70s, late, well, the earliest of 70s, they were going to try Woodstock in western Ontario, but yours truly with a few people showed up at a meeting where farmers were. And we got up and raved in a hurry before, you know, authorities could be called or anything else. It was a public meeting. The farmers were shocked. They thought they were just going to make a big buck and rent out like a Woodstock. But we family, young family guys, we didn't want uh, Woodstock style affecting our teenagers or anything else. And we did a quickie. Oh, it made national news. And I'll tell you that the farmers turned it down. They said, no, we're not going to rent our property to you. That's just one success. The flash demos are the way to go. In quickly, get your message across and out. I did it at uh, meetings in Toronto City Council years ago, etc. They're, they're just fantastic. Well, with no violence, not like the flash mobs of the uh, racial mixture, shall we say, who were attacking whites on street corners in, in America, which are not reported whatsoever up here in Canadian newspapers which again shows control of the news by the liberals, of course. Okay, so anyway, the detailed story, it just goes on and on and on. Heartened by what he sees as the advance of the pro-white philosophy through the Internet, Hunt decided a few months ago now it's time to take his message offline. That message is, in a nutshell, that white people are being mocked, displaced, and violently attacked through an insidious liberal idea known as diversity. And it goes on page after page. It just tells the scoop for sure, but... Not so much tied down to one, one person only, because in Britain there are groups ready tied in, and Australia, New Zealand, and again, I'm very ashamed that there's nothing lined up here in Canada land. And believe me, if we had the money, we would do a white picket in, in white villages. So no excuse, but I, uh, what can I say? My pension just covers the mortgage. Those who have donated so far cover the cost of the web page, the server and so on. You've all heard the, the speech, the drill. But perhaps next time around we'll be, we'll be ready. It all depends on people with deeper pockets out there and how they feel something should be done. But it is to Canada's shame that we're not going to have any representative other than yours truly with this YouTube, which has been spread through different blogs in America and uh, around the globe in white areas. 
that we're standing up for the white day. So at least we can do that much. We are now in a position to make a serious statement to the anti-whites. Hunt wrote on uh, the White March homepage. That is why we need to be on a consistent message and execute our plans with power and precision. We can learn from the failures and successes of the past so as to use our energy efficiently. Right on, right on. If you are a man, put on a pair of light khakis and a nice dress shirt. It should always look like you are a groomsman at a wedding. Or maybe like an avenging Aryan angel. Women, you know how to look great in white. You could also wear sunglasses. Ancient warriors knew that a mask covering the eyes offers protection but also provides the wearer with extra confidence. Sunglasses can intimidate others who cannot see your eyes while making you seem cool and collected. Legal, of course. This look is good if there might be hostile crowds. Well, there's not going to be hostile crowds because they don't know where everyone's going to hit. They can't keep track of every group. That's why this thing is so terrific. The authorities even that are, are anti-white, they don't have the budget to cover every every known white promoter and our friends out there. And the thing I love is too, there's none of this 1939 talk, not a, not a drop of it. It's all 2014, whitey, go, whitey, go. <laughs> go BPL, go BPL. So those who can't do anything but click on the internet, maybe because of age, infirmity, whatever, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whenever. Check the different blogs and newscasts and so on and uh, print up uh, or show up on on the internet uh, captions of where Whitey has legally struck with a flash picket, flash banners, pride. We're not advocate the planned marches that I don't think have been very successful in the past. You've got people in uniforms, they're holding shields and all the rest. It's almost, it's something of a circus. Unless you have a lot of people out there marching, it doesn't look good for a cause, in my opinion. Instead, he says, it's better to fly under the radar. If there are any opposition forces there, we'll be the ones with all the media. And we'll select out of the pieces of media that make us look the best. <laughs> That's right. Uh, just as we picked out this article uh, today, now, there's different white promoters. Uh, Horace the Avenger, he's called, calls uh, the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit is known to a lot of white people. So do click in. It's, uh, I don't want to sound hysterical. It's, this is the way to go. And I am praying, yes, praying that it's successful. And as he says there, can pick and choose which photos display it the best. To give pride in you out there, especially you out there who's, because of economic reason, you're stuck in a, in a small living spot. And you need us to inspire you. Just as we need your few dollars, whether it's 5 or $10 every now and then. Because it all helps keep us going, keeps the operation going. And then when the big one comes, as I said yesterday, I'll sure let you know. Okay, so we have plenty of spark today. Uh, maybe we'll finish the article tomorrow. Who knows? So here we are, March the 12th, getting ready to sign off. We're going to make it, folks. And I'm going to be alive to see it happening. 20 years to go. So you old folks out there, don't give up either. Encourage the young ones. Let's all work together. We need each other. Okie doke. Are you glad you tuned in? We're glad you tuned in. Talk at you tomorrow. Bye for now.